on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream or drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see your tears in the clouds. Feel like the world is on your shoulders and your heart is real heavy. You want to let it out, but you don't know if you're ready. The death of a friend, falling in love, the pain of life. Just listen to my story. You lost your best friend, shit's got you stressing. Want to find a fool who did it, cock back your weapon. Don't want to look to the church for confessions. If you kill them, you can end up in corrections. Some look for the needles and drugs for injection. When I lost Caesar, I was ready for the action. This shit hurts hard, and it really did. But you gotta let the pain go, and that's how you live. Lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream and drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up, and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see your tears in the cloud. Feel the road is on your shoulders, and your heart is real heavy. You wanna let it out, but you don't know if you ready. The death of a friend, falling in love, the pain of life. Just listen to my stories. Falling in love may be easy to some of y'all, but some people in this world have downfalls. Been in love so many times, their heart got locked, y'all. Mention the word love, pause, then the tears start to crawl down their face fast like Niagara Falls. Feeling you had a messed up like prank calls. Why it gotta be so damn hard trying to find the right one? Set your standards high and get this like an M. Lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream and drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see your tears in the cloud. Feel like the world is on your shoulders and your heart is real heavy. You want to let it out, but you don't know if you're ready. The death of a friend, falling in love, the pain of life. Just listen to my story. Phone bill is due, rent and cars too. By the end of the month and you got no food. Mom at home first and dad can't go to work. That's only if you had a dad. Imagine that hurt. Four kids in one house, one mom and no spouse. Not enough room and family sleep on the couch. You don't know why and you looking for an answer. Just found out grandpa got cancer. Lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream and drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see your tears in the cloud. Feel like the world is on your shoulders and your heart is real heavy. You want to let it out, but you don't know if you ready. The death of a friend, falling in love, the pains of life. Just listen to my stories. Just listen to my stories. Just listen to my stories. Story. Lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream and drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly. Feel like the world is on your shoulders and your heart is real heavy. You want to let it out, but you don't know if you're ready. The death of a friend, falling in love, the pain in life. Just listen to my stories. Just listen to my stories. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, young lady. Welcome back, everybody, to Black Conscious Convo. Blah, blah, blah. Black Conscious Convo presents Loving in Color in Colorado. How are you doing, my lovely co-host, Queen? I am doing great today. I'm doing fine. Um, how are you guys? Missed you guys this last week we took a little break i hope you guys are doing well too i am doing very well um that is one of the reasons why i sound so chipper um (laughs) (laughs) um, i am one half of this dynamic duo host chris diggins with my co-host queen talisa hawkins we are going to do this today, young lady. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Are you feeling all right, though? Because, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I missed you. I am feeling good today. I'm sure I'll be feeling much better once I'm finally able 
to get in and, and see my doctor and he probably start some meds. I feel a lot better then. But for what it's worth, this week, today, I'm feeling great. Uh, that's good to hear. I'm not going to lie to you. Like I said, I am. I was I was really worried about you. Um, it's 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 something that we all must do. And that is the mental health check in. Correct. Right. Right. Very important. Take your mental health seriously. I just, you know, in the last week came to the realization that my depression had gotten to a place where it was crippling, where I wasn't able to get up some days or get out of bed other days. And, you know, it it feels like when you're in those types of moments, it feels like you're just tired or you're just lazy or whatever. But that's just your negative self-talk happening. Right. And know that if, you know, your own motivation isn't enough to get you out of bed, then there's probably some chemical imbalance happening there. And so I had to have the conversation and be like, you know what, I think my depression has gotten to a debilitative state and I need to get some medical treatment. And I totally feel you there. Um, I find myself going to God and to individuals that I know are faithful and doing the work and having conversations in depth now. And it's not just for myself, it's for others too, you know, um, that's that's sort of kind of where my our conversation is is coming from today. However, what are you smoking on, Queen? Um, today I am smoking on well, um, lemon haze, which is a sativa. I got it at Green Dragon at the Marijuana Mansion. If you've never been there, it's pretty cool. And um, it's testing at 23% THC. And yeah, I like it. It has a nice high to it. And there's a nice little lemony aftertaste. It's any, any fruity sativa, I can say, except for Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express. Pineapple is like Express, a perfect, yes. It's is not perfect tasty sativa. at all. Yeah. Right. But it's a perfect sativa, though. Yeah, it is. And I see why they call it Pineapple Express because of the taste. Like if you had if you burned pineapple, like that's what it would taste like. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm a fan of strawberry cough my myself because it smells like Fruit Loops. <laughs> okay. And it tastes real sweet too. It tastes a little strawberry. It's got a nice little pink tint. It's it's so amazing what you can do with marijuana. It is. And not to lie, I miss you in the studio. Yeah, me too. You know what I mean? We were supposed to be together, but we always will make this happen um, some way or another. Me, myself, I am smoking on some cookies and cream, testing out at 25.85%, coming from Kind Love, which I picked up from Golden Meds, as you already know, everybody. They sell everybody's shit. So go get you some shit. Yeah. Some, some golden meds. <laughs> and it's some good, it, they got some good shit, I'm telling you. Just when you think of some of the growers that you're used to buying, I'm telling you, go to Golden Med. Holla at your boy. Um, but back to that. Back to our conversation. Wants and needs in relationships of color. This is a very deep subject because of what has been going on in the community and in relationships around the community. I don't know. Um, a lot of people have been being hurt, like from from being cheated on. 
Mm. Have you yeah. heard anybody say that they've been cheated on recently? Um, you know, not recently, not in my circle of friends and women that I talk to. Um, but I know it's a common reoccurrence about, you know, infidelity. So I've been cheated on in the past. I've experienced it. And I've cheated before. So I've, I've also been a cheater. So... Yeah, I have some experience. I've never cheated. I have twice. Once I got caught out. I got once I got um once I can I confessed to cheating. And then the second time I never confessed and he never found out. Wow. They were definitely, I was like, you know, 16 and like maybe eight, no, maybe like 17, 16 and like 17, but when I was a teenager, pretty much. Today, I just, you know how I date now. Today, I'm in open relationships and and shit like that. Like, I'm not even really in a committed relationship unless I feel like, you know, there's some real chance of marriage or something like that. So, you know, now I've never cheated and I haven't been cheated on recently in my adult, and like since I really did my dating coach program, I haven't entered it into any relationship where I was cheated on or the per- other person was cheating or I cheated or anything like that. I found more fulfilling relationships once I figured out what I like. But um yeah, I've yeah, cuz some people say in the especially in the LGBT community a lot of people have their statements about bisexuality because everybody's yeah. pretty much confirmed on theirs and they say, oh, you guys are just picking and choosing, huh? I mean, yeah, if you want to say that, you know, <laughs> I get to pick and choose who I want to date and who I like, and it doesn't matter from which side. Um, it's always about the interaction and I'm actually considering myself to maybe be more of like a pansexual person because I'd be in a relationship with a trans woman if ever an opportunity presented itself and there was genuine connection or something of that nature if that person was open to it but um as of right now I haven't experienced that so I can't say that I, I am pan I guess I'm, I'm still considered bisexual because I've only been in a relationship with you know, cis identifying women and cis identifying men and bisexual men. And bisexual How many women. of these individuals have been individuals of color? Because me, myself, I've never cheated and I've only dated black folks. Are, are you saying which ones of what? Like the girls and the boys or like what? All together. I've only dated Well, black most people. of my relationships. Well, almost all of my relationships, like committed monogamous relationships, were with people of color, with black people. So, like a black woman, you know, was in a relationship with a black woman, and then I got out of that relationship, was in another relationship with a black woman. I've only ever dated black women. I'm really pretty much primarily attracted to black women. So, <laughs> when I date and when I date women, it's normally with a black woman. I've never been in relationship or in attraction with. A, a white woman before. Not that I don't find them attractive. I just have never and created romance or chemistry. And then, oh, same with black men. I've, up until now, my relationship with the white man that I'm with now, I've dated plenty of white men. I've just never been in a committed relationship with any. We've always been like dating friends but never put like a real title like, yes, we're together. Let me introduce you to my family. I have never, only with black men have that happened. And then my boyfriend now, um, he's recently met my mother and my sisters. So he's the first like, like real solid white relationship I've had. The, the guy you're dating now, the white guy? Yeah. Got you. But I've been on dates with white guys before, you know, <laughs> I've hung out with them stuff like that so like when i'm on the dating apps i don't discriminate if a white guy flies into my inbox and wants to take me out and spend some time with me i'm gonna you know acquiesce to that request if i want 
And then, you know, if eventually it just doesn't never really go anywhere. So, and when I'm with black men, it goes right to relationships. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but like I, I end up in relationships with black men, and I I prefer black men. So. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm just not a, limiting myself to only being with black men. Got you. Yeah, I um, I myself have only dated black. I've my circle has always been. I've never felt the need or want outside of my the Hispanic community, like, mm. like to me, the Hispanic community is just like family because I grew up with them here in Colorado, in Montbello, like I said, the majority of the time we was always doing some of their same events and they was at some of the same events we was at. So, you know what I mean? It was like always, it was always a good mix of party. And at the same time, I have just always been attracted to every shade of black that there is from the brightest of bright brights to <laughs> the darkest of the dark to the where they say there ain't no the dark of the berry there ain't no juice no more i don't i <laughs> i don't like i i have like the it all um my my wants and my needs, though, I cannot clarify when it comes to black males. Or when it comes to males, I cannot clarify. Um, at the same time, though, I do like attributes from different categories of men of color. Like I said, mm. I I love that the Hispanic community believes in their lachismo. At the same time, their sensitivity and emotion that they put into relationships is is way is way more powerful than than men of color than black men. I will say that. Um, black men, they're the ones that are not broken to the. I'm going to make this shit happen on my own regardless the fuck's going on. I'm going to go, go, go. That shit, that shit is always a turn on for me. Mm-hmm. Well, I just have to navigate this world as a woman and so things are like very different for me. I always have to be conscious of the fact that no matter where I go, I'm not safe. It don't matter what race of man I am with. So I have to be very careful about who I choose to be in relationship with. And I have to be careful about how, I, you know, I treat them and talk to them and, you know, all kinds of shit because you break up with a guy, you talking to a guy all crazy and next thing you know, he, you know, done showed up and murdered you for some reason. Like, <laughs> Because he just done held a grudge with you for years. So I just be real cautious and real careful. Has that happened? Oh, I've had guys like just like in their own mind were in a relationship for whatever reason. And then when they're confronted with the reality of the fact that like, I don't know you, I don't like you. Like, why are you following me every day? Like, why are you stalking my week? Why are you hanging me outside my house waiting for me to come outside? Like, that's creepy. And then been cussed out and had this person going like a revenge plot, like gossiping at me about me at school, spreading drama, spreading rumors, causing me to get in fight with other girls in the neighborhood as some like revenge for me not being interested. 
It's Chihuahua. ridiculous. Look, I want to play something. Uh-huh. Just like my mama. She told me at six or seven, if I got to choose between you and this man, I'm going to choose him. And I left. I walked down the street, can called my grandma, and who came to get me? Yeah, I can hear it. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. So interesting that you never remember the things that you inflict on others, but you remember what they inflict on you. His memory, look at that, is that his mother chose a man over him. Mm -hmm. This is the mother that exposed him to abuse. Mm -hmm. This is the mother that left him off with his grandmother. This is the mother that did those things to him, who now thinks she has the right and the privilege to tell him how to deal with his sister. And your unhealed stuff about being abused, you got to get that handled. You can't keep imposing that on everybody. I have only known this young man 24 hours, and there's no way in the world just reading his space that I know he's going to allow a man to abuse a woman in his presence. She doesn't think about me that way. She doesn't. Well, because I just saw him playing basketball and you, going on dates so together. So what? And... Mind your business. You say that you don't see the man that your son is? Real quick. She's about to ask this young lady a very important question. If her son isn't necessarily a real man, her words, not mine, where is she getting her interpretation of what a real man actually looks like from? It's the same thing that a lot of you feel. You want a man to be a real man, but a lot of you have never seen a real man in person so you can compare a real man versus a non-real man. You guys have no idea what you want because you have never seen the things that you say you want. Listen to what she says. So I'm asking you, since this is not a demonstration of a man, you need to tell me what man you're using to measure him with. Which one? My idea. Which is your idea. Mm -hmm. Now, is that the idea you trained him up to be? Mm -hmm. Oh, so how in the blazing bejesus are you holding him accountable to a standard that, that you didn't teach him, his father didn't give him, he don't even know what it is, and yet as his mother, you sit in his face and tell him you don't respect him as a man. Tell me how that works. Help me. I can say this and it was events. It wasn't just. I'm not talking. I'm talking about. And it's also thing. how he treats me. Yeah, but I'm and not with it. Hello, 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 hello. So. You see, you are a provocative victim. You provoke stuff. And then when you start being held accountable for it, then you start twisting and turning and making the other person wrong. Look at me, Ma. Look at me. Look at me. You just sat here. And told your son, we ain't got a needle in his arm, who I'm assuming pays his own rent. He's married to a registered nurse. He's got three baby boys. And you just sat here in his face and said, I don't respect him as a man. Mm -hmm. And you don't think to consider what that does to his heart, to his soul, to his spirit. I'm sure that's hurtful. And you okay with that? And it's hurtful for the things that he said. But there you go. You're doing it. You're doing it right now. You're doing it right now. I'm like, holding you accountable and you're spinning. You're spinning your web. You're trying to get away. You're trying to just... get away. Tell me. Just, here's the question. Just answer it. We'll get back to that okay, other stuff I, later. I, Tell me. Forgive me. I respect him. He's a wonderful man. <sighs> Do you understand that your mouth, your voice, your words are connected to the coils in his heart, to the vows in his heart? He can't help but love you. And every time you dishonor that love, you chip a piece of it, chip a piece of it. This is why in our culture as black people, when the boys turn a certain age, the men come and get him and take him away from the mother because she can emotionally manipulate him. 
But since we don't live in our culture no more, we say what we want to say, do what we want to say. We tear our men down and then wonder why they don't make good husbands and fathers. Mothers destroy sons. His mother can speak to him in certain ways that destroy him in ways that can never be repaired. If you want to discuss this particular video further, go in the comments right now and start to discuss this in ways that can never his mother can That was deep. Ooh, Ayana Van. Ayana Van Van. She going to get to the source of the problem. I, I can't watch that show. It's too emotional. But it's good. That's what therapy looks like, y'all. That's what therapy looks like. That is what therapy looks like. And that is my whole point in want and needs. When people say they know their wants and needs, where do these ideas come from? Mm -hmm. I knew when I was going, when, when I was working and somehow I figured out that I was going through therapy with all of my patients fighting for life on dialysis, I noticed that my wants and my needs changed. I didn't want to have several different people of my wants in my life and my son's life when I was raising my son. I said that would be disrespectful to my son. So I put everything on my son's lap if my son liked people around me my son recommended me we hang out with them or they hang they come over you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that's the relationship me and my son had um emotionally i was not there And me and him talk about these things. Emotionally, for a while, until he was about 10 or 11 years old, I was not there emotionally. Because the only thing I had was, when I focused on him, that was the love. That was it. My love stopped there. Nobody else was important. Because that was who I loved and I could just block out. I mean, besides my family and my friends, you know, I blocked out everything else. You know what I mean? So it was like I, I, I made this shield and bubble that I didn't need. But at the same time... I was supposed to let go through my son as I was growing and he was growing. And that's what therapy has helped me to learn. That's deep. That's very deep. I um, went to therapy and therapy just really helped me get clear about the, the traumas in my childhood that were still affecting me as an adult. I saw something somewhere that says that, you know, once you, you hit your 20s, you start to deal with all the psychological, the psychological issues that were caused from traumas as a child. Um, you start to really reckon with that and deal with in your 20s. And so I was fortunate enough to be in therapy when this was all happening. So I had someone to help me walk through it and really clearly see what happened you know there are things that happened when I was younger that were like clear like oh clearly this thing happened but then there were some other smaller things that I never considered because they're not that big of a deal but when you're in therapy you learn like no actually they're all a big they're all a big deal they all are like micro doses that build up to this um huge void or huge trauma that you didn't have to deal with as an adult so after doing that and then going to 
um, a coaching program. I just took this really, really intense uh, personal development coaching program. And it was very confronting. And in that class, I developed the tools to help me kind of decipher what I was going through and my experiences. And it was that program that led me to go to a dating coach because I was able to see, like, you know what? Like, I haven't had quality men in my life consistently. Like, I just haven't. And um, not to take anything away from my father, who I love and adore, but he's not a perfect person. Like, he has his own issues and his own traumas. And he's, a, like, a forever bachelor for, in my mind. Like, he's always been... Um, single or dating women or sometimes dating multiple women. So, you know, when I look at my relationships, I'm like, you know, I don't really have a clue of what a healthy, functioning relationship looks like. I don't have anybody who I can turn to to ask this type of question or who can model this example for me. I've never even been to a wedding before. I've never even seen two black people be married in real life. So... I was like, I have no idea what this looks like. And I was like, so I'm going to need professional help with putting this together. And I'm going to need to expand the type of men that I date. And that's really when I started dating interracially. And it was through the interracial relationships that I started to see what some men were willing to give. <laughs> men who didn't have a lot of trauma or baggage who showed up cold and complete. Um, because they didn't grow up with issues or they came from a two-parent household and never had to worry about who they were or their identity or any of that other stuff. There's a level of freedom in which they exist in and then they can just show up and be kind and be caring. And, and then you realize like, oh, because someone treats me with kindness doesn't automatically mean that I have to give them myself or my body. That should be the way they treat me all the time. And it should be other characteristics that are deep deeper personality traits that I find out, that I adore. So it was through the coaching that I learned what uh, that looks like, what a, a real whole man, divine masculinity looks like. And that's totally something that everyone should know when it comes to relationships. I totally agree with what you said there. Um, I, me, myself, I know a functioning relationship from my grandfather. My grandfather raised all of his children, I want to say a total of 12, and his theory was like, if boy, if one job isn't good enough, get two. If two jobs isn't good enough, go back to school. And my grandmother, who had a nurse's license, a nurse's degree, um, did not have to ever work. They had two cars in the house. My my grandmother never drove, but because she wanted to walk everywhere, so they walked everywhere around the city when everybody didn't didn't like to walk. You know, um, it, the East Side was something else back then growing up. And hearing how, like, my grandfather used to say things like, her money is her money. I take care of all the bills in the house. Whatever she do with her money, that's her money. You know what I mean? And I don't think a lot of people understand what that means when it comes to being in an honest, I mean, like everybody knew <laughs> the stories that get told around all the seasons let you know how much someone really loves someone, you know? Yeah. And nowadays, men say that's unrealistic. They say it's unrealistic for women to expect them to work two jobs and to do things and to expect them to be able to pay 
the bills and things like that. That's unrealistic. And you are saying, stop being lazy. Like, That's... One or two things got to happen. You either got to <laughs> get up off your ass and get another job or get up off your ass and book these companies that are not paying you a fair living wage. Look, it's people love to like, uh, people love to make pride cometh before the fall. A majority of men, or should I, let's let's change that. The majority of males know what they're supposed to do when it comes to the things that they are doing in their life. There's a fraction of males that are oblivious because their dumb is just it's so close to stupid <laughs> Be, for real because they're actually thinking about their stupid ideas you know what I mean like when you watch cartoons and you see like when you see the bad guy plotting out what they're about to do and you know it's not gonna happen but hey. You know what I mean? It's just like that. And it just goes to show how many men are not taught, really. Right. Like Once what again, a man is or his purpose or you know your purpose. Because for me, that just sounds like some. There's a facet of men who believe that they should be able to exist and have access to women and all these other things without having to contribute. To society, without or to having the woman. to hold themselves accountable, let's put that there. The same way that that she stated in that, um, what you call it, in that clip, holding people accountable to their own actions. Mm -hmm. No one likes to be called out. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> no one likes to be called out for the mistakes that they make. And their clear and present mistakes. They can find a way around to make an excuse for the mistakes. Right. But they can never, ever claim their mistakes. And that's one of the that's one of the things that Women need to, or females need to grasp a man that holds themselves accountable. Not that they make an excuse for it. When they say that they're working on something, that means that a man is actually practicing on a day-to-day -day basis. Because that is the only thing we can hold each other accountable for, is what happens in a 24-hour basis. Unless, you know, you're cheating and you're staying up 48 hours, you know what I mean? And not medically, you know, there are those that have medical disorders that do not allow them to sleep, which is very, very sad. Trust me. Um, but at the same time. Being sleep is is like a normal male thing. And when males practice, that is us waking up. When we practice something repetitiously that we know we're not good at, that is us consistently working. And those that are not consistently working are not the males that you should be looking at or even invested in. I mean, we definitely know that. And I was just having a conversation online about the fact that um, there's this guy online and he was just talking about how you know, you have to build something for the community. You have to build something, be building something to gain the respect of others. You cannot be building 
doing nothing and then demand people's respect and not be working towards something or build bettering yourself for the overall betterment of the community and a lot of men didn't like this they was pushing back on it like no like i think you tripping and he was like i need y'all to think critical about this like this is That's... how it is this is how it's set up i'm like this is how nature is it's every creature here on this planet has to contribute to their herd, to their pack, to their portion of what their job is on this planet. Right. And there are those whose mothers have allowed them to get away with only accepting so much by saying to them once again, well, baby, if she can't accept you're doing your best, then oh, well. Yes. Yes, and I've I've met some black women who have sons, and they do not hold their sons accountable for nothing. They I don't know. hold them accountable. They don't hold themselves accountable as their mothers for not holding your their child accountable. Like you, well, at some I, point, got there is one mother. Like, I'm not I'm even gonna fall. lie. There is one mother I do know who does hold herself accountable. She says, "I have schizophrenia." This is what she stated, because I've I've never witnessed it. I've never been around her like that. Um, Mm -hmm. Not going to say specifically where she is and how I know her. However, this was her statement. When it comes to mine, I do know that I have schizophrenia. So I I know individuals that live the mindset of different minds in reality, some sober, some unsober. The life, the depending on, how, depending on the person that's present. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And I am very proud of her for you know holding herself accountable and just realizing. Her limitations as a mom who's dealing with mental health issues, that's huge in itself. But I know too many other women who are just like, I don't know who raised him. I didn't raise him to be like that. Well, then who right. raised him, Patricia? <laughs> who did it? For real. And that's the God's honest truth. Like, that's, that's, that's what's so crazy about it. Like, when you tell the truth people really get bothered like when you bring out certain things that happened in the past that that people know that they remember but they choose not to those are some of the destructive actions of humans that we all have to atone to because of the simple fact karma is the most patientest gangster in the world. Can we agree on that one? Um, yes. It is amazing how many people have wants and needs so combined into the same categories that their idea of relationship and relationships are skewed. They don't know how to have relationships. They don't know who are the right people to choose and they say love is blind (laughs) it'll take over your mind if you think it's love it's truly not elevate and find but at the same time though freedom allows for that to happen and to gain freedom one must truly gain 
knowledge of oneself. And that is one of the things that I love hearing you speak about. The knowledge that you have seeked within yourself through therapy. Yeah, well, I was going to say about the, um, about as far as people not knowing what they're looking for, their wants versus their needs in relationships, a lot of times people go into relationships looking for the healing or the trauma, the love that they didn't get as a kid. So sometimes you're not even really looking for a partner. You're going into this looking for your mom or your dad or right. stuff that you didn't get from yourself as a child. You now looking for it as an adult and expecting your partner to fulfill in you all the things that your mother or your father did. And that's not fair to that person. So it's really important that you do the therapy and do the work so you can figure out like, you know what, I have these trouble points in me, but those are not relationship requirements. That's stuff that I need to get from my mama and my daddy. That is. And, you know, I'm sitting here online, you know, I'm set up in this whole little research station <laughs> creation. <laughs> um. There are a lot of men in prison that admit to having more mother issues than they have father issues. Like a lot of them know who their father is. They just go, oh, that's a deadbeat. You know what I mean? Da -da 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 -da. Whereas in when it comes to their moms, a lot of mothers don't know that one bit of trauma that they've put onto their child, like in that clip, mm. that has scorned their child for so long. And to this, to this day, they cannot have a comfortable relationship or be in a relationship healthy because they've never seen one, as you said, and them themselves have never tried to participate in one authentically. They have well, you always... can't participate in something authentically that you've never had. You they... can only you can only show up as where you're from where you're at and, and try to make it work from where you're at. But I want to bring your conversation back because. A lot of those men who go, oh, yeah, my dad was a deadbeat. I know who he is. That's dismissive. That's not healed. <laughs> You're dismissing Correct. that trauma. You're not allowing yourself to acknowledge that trauma. It's easier to acknowledge the trauma that you know, and it's much harder to address the trauma that you're not even dealing with, that you don't even realize you have. And that's where therapy comes in, because a therapist wouldn't let you skirt past that. They would be like, well, let's come back to that. Why is it that, oh, he's just this, he's just that? Like, what is that? What does that really mean for you? Let's really sit in that. Let's tease that out. Because ultimately, a lot of times I hear men say like, oh, I don't feel complete. I don't feel loved. I don't feel acknowledged. While being spoiled and pampered by their mama, their grandmama, their cousins, their sisters, everybody kissing their ass and babying them and going above and beyond. But they still don't feel that. But it's because that love and that feeling that you're looking for comes from your masculine. You need that masculine love. You need that masculine validation that time with men that male bonding period and that's what people do not get when it comes to males in general i consistently when it comes to black men we are of a tribal nature that is our history we have always followed a king not just any king the Toughest, roughest, baddest motherfucker in the bunch. Shaka Zulu made everyone bow down. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. He came from nothing. 
and rose to something. And that is what makes his story so, so prolific. In general, we as black people, as black people, need to grasp that one, yes, we will follow the right one, but we need to figure out what the right one is. And not that we were all kings and queens from Africa. We couldn't have been all queens and kings because somebody had to milk the goddamn goat. Okay? Somebody had to tend to the camels, for real, to the oxes, for mm -hmm. real, to the sheep. Somebody had to tend to making a clothing, to putting together all of these plans where everybody was going. And a lot of tribes moved around the southern continent of Africa. So you wouldn't catch them in the same places. We traveled with the herd, the same right. way Native Americans did here in the plains. Like they followed the buffalo around. Right. The whole tribe did. Everybody right. moved, and everybody had a part to play. I mean, that, that was just. Those are just several. Whole. Those are just several different tribes, though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And people don't grasp that. Like they're, they're, the the. Once again, the one tribe that was the most prolific tribe in Southern Africa was the Zulu Nation. That right there should make everybody think about one thing. How much of their heritage comes from Southern Africa, where a majority of all slaves come from, and then up the coast from Brazil all the way up to North America. Because folks didn't just come straight across the ocean. And that's where folks just be getting crazy at. Folks didn't just leave Africa and come straight across the ocean. They had to die because they had to restock supplies. And the reason why the southern coast and the, the the western and eastern coast of southern america and brazil and all of that have people of color is because we've been traded for hundreds of years up Still and down being that traded coast. currently period if you think that slavery is over in africa it is not oh it's it's once again, a majority of what is going on has been played off by Facebook and all of these social media companies because all these countries can pay for it. Um, I just watched this clip from uh, on HBO Max, um, this one British dude. I don't know if you pay attention to him. And he comes on after Bill Maher. Um, oh, John Oliver. Yeah. He did this piece on Taiwan and China. Did you know everyone that says Taiwan is a country is disrespecting China? Yeah, I I only know this because I met a girl who was actually from Taiwan and she we sat down and had a conversation about it and she explained her whole she explained the whole plight of her country in Taiwan and how it's its own nation but China refuses to recognize it cuz they've colonized it <laughs> and conquered it and if you are here in America and you say that Taiwan's its own country, you will get in trouble by China. Like you will get in trouble because that's how much sway the China Chinese government has in our mass media, in our politics, and so much more. Yeah, so I don't know if we'll ever approach that conversation. However, 
I do feel for anyone stuck in between a conversation that is like, wow. Because that is a wow conversation. Like, when that was broken down, I was like, wow. I was, too. It was... It was very educational. I was very oh. fortunate that she took the time to explain it to me. Because when she said, I asked her, was she Chinese? And she was like, I'm actually Taiwanese. And she's like, we're our own country, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she broke it all down. And I was like, oh, shoot, girl, I had no idea. Oh. And then oh, I yeah. started paying yeah. attention to they got Hollywood jets. and media and all that other stuff. And I started seeing, like... If you watch, if you watch, what is it? Top Gun? Top Gun? Is that the yes. movie with Tom Cruise? Yes. Where they, the old school version. So you watched the John movie. Oliver episode? No, I already knew this. Oh, look. John and Oliver <laughs> were talking about all of those. I, yes. I was like, look, you watched John Oliver? <laughs> look. Okay. Yes. I'm a fan of John Oliver's. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how much, I don't know how much of the, he, I don't. He may have to apologize for some of the stuff that he may have said. I don't know. I never I don't, knew any shit. of this stuff about China and Taiwan. Never knew. Mm. Yeah. I don't think I would have never known unless someone would have sat down and broke that down to me, like I said, like you had, or. Um, someone else would have brought it to my attention. Mm, yeah, but it I, falls into that category of wants and needs. Like, <laughs> is 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 Taiwan a want or a need? I mean, for China, it's a want. <laughs> Definitely not that they need Taiwan for anything other than to look more powerful and more intimidating to the United Nations and United States because all of this is a whose dick is bigger than whose contest on a global <laughs> scale. So, <laughs> yeah. <It's funny. laughs> you, you say that. Um, it's... To me, it's like, in general, where we can do this because we can do this. And it's the same thing like colonization. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. We can do this because we can do this. The way they colonize in the water right now. (laughs) We're just going to do it better than Europeans did it. We're going to do the exact same thing. <laughs> I right. mean, if we're just comparing gonna do who's doing a better job, America still is by far. People still buy into the BS that America is the greatest country. <laughs> well, we ain't no better than no other country. In fact, we rank low on on average as far as education and safety and health care and jobs. <laughs> like, we are down near on par with dictatorships and some sources. But our marketing, man, we've got stellar marketing. We have. We have. We've you know, um, our marketing is diabolical. Like when I think it about, is. <laughs> when I think about like how people have taken marketing and moved it from what it was to what it is to make it what it is, it's completely diabolical. And it's scary. Yeah, it is. It's it's scary when you realize that Star Wars is about us. We are the imperial force. <laughs> it's going around 
and conquering all these different nations. And every time we go and meet with the United Nations, we play like we're so good, like we are not the Dark Lord when we really are. <laughs> it's just about us, y'all. And we're all cogs in the machines. <laughs> Look. I remember playing that in band, and boy, oh boy, it gives of course you, you did. a sense of yeah. I'm a. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Those are one of the times where I was there. Like, you know what I mean? When I was when I was a whole child, you knew in band class. Like, I was a whole child. Like. I sat and I listened. I did not argue with the teacher. There was never a band teacher that could say, yes, he destroyed me. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. My, of course you did, is the fact that you paid that song in band. Growing up myself, I've never, ever heard a band play that song, ever. I was learning Rubber Band Man and... <laughs> Oh no, we played like and no, Earth, we, Wind and Fire. And that's what we were playing. Oh yeah, no, we played all of that. It was when we went to competition because that's what that's what that was competition music. If you didn't, oh, yeah, you couldn't no. take you couldn't take that to state. Our stuff was like, like Battle Bobby of the Bands. Brown. It yeah, no, get we down. Was, and yeah, Bobby Brown. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't be cruel. Like. Um, Everything from stuff. that time frame, like we played everything that was on the radio during that time. It just frame. was never. We've ne I never played that. Ghostbusters. Song ever. <laughs> um, you got to remember, I am a decade older than you, so no, uh, not none of that either. And we we played we played nothing but in the middle school nothing but like R and B and. And what you call it? Nah, we didn't even have no hip hop songs because there wasn't none back then. We played. I remember bringing Bone Thugs and Harmony to the football game on a tape deck that we connected to an amp, and we played that when Montbello ran out on the field, and that changed a whole game. Boy, oh boy, when they heard Ouija, everybody was like, what the fuck? Mm. Do you remember that sounds that? like, oh, uh, yeah, I, I remember Bone Thugs and Hamarni. That's, um, I grew up. Yeah, Ouija was like, when we first yeah. heard Ouija, because that was that, like, I'm, I'm a product of hip hop. Like, I am the same age as hip hop as they they say that's what makes it so crazy i think about is. how many times i have seen rap just like a new song new way of rap just change people's lives like it's amazing i remember when nwa caused a ruckus and now then like 10 out, ten years later they was on tour again it was like wow I remember when people hated you when I was a kid like you know what I mean like I remember people, I wasn't even able to go to the store and buy them because they had that parental thingy thingy on there <laughs> but we had copies <laughs> Because of Juneteenth, niggas was going to sell niggas tapes and CDs at Juneteenth. That's crazy. I remember little stuff like that. But, of course, I was in the South as a kid. So my experience is very different, <laughs> you know. Right. So I, I remember buying, you know, the um, first Hot Boys album as a mixtape as a kid, like sit buying it off the guy at the gas station when before it was, and then the next thing you knew it was on the radio. And then the next thing you knew they was all over TV. He was like, dang, like, look at it. These niggas from New Orleans, they really did it. You know, whoa, 
Master P too, like buying shit out of the park, pulling up to some of those places because my auntie lives in New Orleans too. So going down to the Fifth Ward and, and buying CDs out of people's fucking trunks of their car and buying mixtapes so and shit lived like in that. You Nola too, though. I did as a kid. I lived in the Nola and I lived in Shreveport. I was living in uh, Shreveport and Rayville right when Boosie was popping off and Webby was popping off. And that's what everybody was bringing to school on their mixtapes. And then next thing you knew, they was on the radio. You was like, I was there for those little blow ups. And it, it was epic because then it felt like the music industry was just right there for everybody. Like it was just right there it didn't take much when you had niggas who's getting seen out of street pole. like who would have thought that boosie and fucking webby some niggas from the backwoods would like get so big so or that the hot boys would get so big or or uh, fucking who um what's his name what is his name from mississippi david banner that's another one <laughs> That I used to hear, used to buy his little mixtapes. That man is a vicious producer. Like that man is fine. David Banner can get it. My whole life, that man can get it. David Banner has always been fine. (laughs) Let me just climb you. Let me climb you, you, David Banner. (laughs) That man is is so funny. It's a fine black man right there. It's a fine black man right there. Look at you. That made me make people laugh so many times because she's so funny. I'm just saying. But yeah, you know, I remember being there and then the band, like, of course, like the band is just in the South. Like, it's that's the only thing that matters is football, basketball, and the band. Like, that's it. So, band is lit and hype no matter what. Oh, yeah. The band, band in the, the South. <laughs> Band in the South, if I would have went to any other school district, thank you. Shout out Mr. Singleton, Martin Luther King Middle School in Denver, Colorado. Um, I would have never had the opportunity to play black music at all. Or even at that, I learned how to play without learning how to read any forms of music. So I'm able to pick up a baritone, sousaphone, uh, French horn, and a trombone, and a trumpet. I just don't like my embouchure on a trumpet. Uh, uh, I play the clarinet, if you are all wondering. (laughs) <laughs> a clarinet girl but oh, I was sad you. because the goal was to be on the band you wanted to be on the drum line and I so wanted to be on the drum line but I did not have the hand-eye coordination to play oh wow <laughs> I so desperately I was like let me get the synthesis but there was already like three synthesis like dang <laughs> like, y'all for real so I had to get the clarinet because, of course, there's not that many people who want to play the clarinet because everybody else want to play something cool and sexy, like the saxophone or something like that. But whatever. But girls play <laughs> the clarinet though, and you can you can still get your wiggle on with the clarinet. I mean, yeah, you can still get down like the dudes in the front. They be getting down. Boom. You know, y'all ever watch Drumline? It be like that in middle school. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because you have by the time you get to college, you gotta already be proficient to even make the team. You can't just oh, when, get the, you already gotta be like if you go be a drumette, a drum, the dancing girls. You, got to you have better video. have already been dancing your whole childhood up until you got there because you're not just gonna walk on the, the dance net and think you' about to be. A you got to have video girl. of your four years in marching band with the <laughs> with the with the band. <laughs> Every homecoming, yes, if y'all want to know more about it, do watch the Netflix documentary. I think it was Stomp, or maybe it's called The Band. It's on Netflix, though. It's about Florida AMU, which has been the number one band for Battle of the Bands for like five years running. And they show you their audition process, and it is intense. I so Beyonce believe used it. them for her concert because they be on top of it. Look, um, you know what, though? I was going to tell you, um, one, thank you for telling me about 
um, life insurance. No, about any time. You know why? Uh, I just got that policy number again that I asked for with USAA. Mm-hmm. For one sixty nine a month for twenty years. Oh, isn't that crazy? Yes, it is. I was like, "Are you serious?" I said, "This is what I'm asking for." He goes, "Okay." I said, "So." Because I didn't know anything about it. Like, I'm not even going to lie because there are different types. Once again, he says the one that we're offering right now for our members is a term life. And this is what the number you want on it is. And so we'll put that in. And this is the number that you'll get. And it's like, okay. And I was just like, wow. Wow. I said, this is not that simple. And they was like, yeah, it's that simple. And they said, oh, yeah, we'll be sending somebody to you to do the physical. I said, yeah. I said excuse me? I said, what are you so and that is a good paying job, I found out. <laughs> yes. That is a very good paying job. They hire nurse practitioners. That means that you go to school for four years to be in nurse practitioner, which is basically skipping the med school as a nurse, like doctors have to do, which they sort of kind of get mad at, but oh well, y'all know the same shit, nigga, don't get mad. Right. (laughs) She did her four years, you did your four years, plus med school. Congratulations. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah um, what do you have going on for this evening have you been watching anything new I don't want to change the subject up for anything but anything we're about to get up out of here um, let me think really hard because I just finished Legacy which is a spin off of a spinoff. Screw you. I have not finished it yet. Stop. It was I, so good. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this series. And I I'm going to be doing a breakdown of the, the boyfriend show. at all. He does I not make me. I love him. And I he does not so make handsome. me like so him. Cute. He does not make me hate him. He could have died a long time ago. The the. The I like him leader of the of werewolf how pack. He is. He is the very leader of the werewolf very pack. Very ride or die. Oh, he, he is such. He is such a uh, spaz. The um, little Asian dude. Yes, the Asian dude, head of the wolf pack. He yeah, is he's so cute. old. <laughs> Old, old. And I love the vampires. I love both of them. I love this series, you guys. I'm going to do a deep dive in this. And then what's his name just doesn't seem like... I don't know where he's coming from this season, but he is definitely so sensitive as a vampire. An old singing vampire, like, dude, come on, man. I love it. And he is so talented. Yo, I'm going to do a whole deep dive of the damn musical episode. I cannot wait because I love it. I oh, need a vampire diary. Oh, you love that diary. episode of the musical? I need a vampire diary musical. And you know her life. ass. You know the twin sister was not singing her part, right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she always, she's like the, supposed, the, the blonde one. She was not singing at all. Her shit was... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Her part was, her was just, she's yeah. I don't at least think she, she was saying, honest though, right. and they was honest about Caroline's ass because in the first two, three seasons of Vampire Diaries, Caroline's ass was annoying as hell. She was, I, she was like my least favorite character in the first two seasons. She was, but I, but you understood <sighs> Caroline. Caroline was the girl who was going to make 
everything all right. Like, that's who she was. Like, if shit that's was going to be became. sad. That's who she became. That's not who she was. In the first oh, two seasons, that's... she was a jealous, petty, blind, preppy Because she girl. knew something was going on with Stefan and her best friend. It was still none of her business. And, and she, was she still knew something was going on with jealous. Bonnie and her best friend. So, of course, she was all skeptical. No. Oh, she yeah. She was super jealous of Damon. She started sleeping with Damon. <laughs> that, was, that was way, way down the road, though. That was in the beginning of the seasons. Like, the first season. Oh, no. She oh, yeah. Which is all Damon. When she was I human... See. But when she was human and in her beginning of her vampire transition, it was really later into her transition that it was yeah. like, okay, I fucks with Caroline. And then when she started dating Klaus, I was like, all right, I see it, girl. But right. in the first Klaus, two hey, seasons, look, uh-uh, uh-uh look. I love, I the love only, Klaus and Elisha. That I is. <laughs> Klaus was the only white man, the only white boy that. Yeah, me and him would we would be able to soar. Such a beautiful and well done character. He was so complex. He was tender yet terrifying, sweet but you know, and artistic, very romantic but very protected. Like he had like a lot of all I know is is I know he should he should never have to they should be paying him a lot of fucking money. They, I'm sure they were because he he really did make I did love Elijah too I ain't gonna lie that's why I enjoyed the originals because I felt old girl I and felt her because I was though. like you know the, what I would have slept with her Klaus sister? too <laughs> come on now the sister I liked her I, I, I liked her too Oh my god. I like the family. I like yeah. the siblings. Even the other siblings that they like I Cole not when they like introduced when they Cole in, I like they could have brought in uh, not to say it like this but they could have definitely brought in like if they would have put the dark skin dude that's in originals, um, as, you're talking about Marcellus. As, yes, as Marcellus. That's my my dad's totally, name is Marcellus. <laughs> I, I, I got a cousin named Marcellus. Um, I was like, that's such a beautiful name. I love. It. I would have sure. I would have sure took that, but I could not. It's so. It was so hard believing him throughout the show. It was just always so hard to believe him. He was just fine. That's what he skated on being fine. Like that's when he came on screen. That's, that's the all same I thing was Shamar like. Moore gets away with. Yeah, I think that about Shamar Moore too. I don't think that I've never seen a range of faces from him. He yeah, always I don't, giving me same stoner. thing about uh, like, uh, LL Cool J. Same. I, I think the I, most I've seen him make a face was in Deep Blue Sea, like when he was getting knocked around by that shark. But other than that, LL is giving you smolder. You just get smolder on screen with him. Same with um, Van Diesel and The Rock, if we be honest. He'll go give you body. You know what's funny? The Rock, um, Jamie Foxx <laughs> does an impersonation of The Rock, and it's hilarious. Jamie Foxx so damn talented. I believe you. It, he's he is so he he is talented, and um, in some ways, he wants to re- be he wants to be remembered as a goat, and I can see that. He is already for me for WWE because baby, that was the reason I watched every week. Can you smell it? I'm talking about Jamie Foxx. Oh, oh. <laughs> Jamie Foxx is a legend too. He already a legend too because I grew up watching him too. And he just got finer over his lifetime. Like, I don't know how that man aged like fine wine because when I was young and he was young and skinny on the Jamie Foxx show, he was eh. And then as he got older, that man really came into his own. Jamie Foxx is a fine-ass black man. Gotcha. And he's so, of course. You're silly. Um, you can't miss it in Django. You can't miss it. Stop it. I um, saw it before that, though, online. Stop it. Um, 
do you have anything positive to say on the way out the door? Well, you guys, I want to let you guys know again about my mental health journey. So I was going to use Better Help app to get in touch with a therapist or a psychologist because I felt that was the quickest route to get me my prescriptions for my mental health. But I found out recently that you can actually just go to your primary care physician and tell them what you're dealing with and what your previous diagnosis was. And they may be able to prescribe you the prescriptions that you need and also have them run a full panel so that you can find out what your vitamin levels are. If you have a vitamin D deficiency like myself, they may be able to prescribe some vitamin D supplements as well. So those are the actions that I'm going to be taking to get myself together. If you need any help, you can try the BetterHelp app too, or just reach out to your primary care physician. That's what I'm talking about, young ladies. I appreciate you being open and honest about your situation. Me, myself. I I try to be as open and as honest about my stuff with you and everybody that you, um, if you follow me or see me anywhere, you know your boy is always willing to either conversate or <clears throat> open his 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 ears to listen to what you're going through. Um. Always remember there is a better way. No matter what anybody says, there is always a better way. You may not see it right now. It may not be clear to you. There is always a better way. That's mine. All right, and then, well, Chris, let's get up out of here then. Where can they find us every Wednesday and Sunday? Look, (laughs) you can find your boy right here with you, young lady, Chris Lucas Diggins, on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, and I think that's it for the... (laughs) <laughs> and look and then www.black uh blackccent.com that is blackccent.com that is how you can connect with us personally and you young lady you guys know you can find me here sunday and wednesdays and you can also find me on my instagram at the mortgage queen and on tiktok now also at the Mortgage Queen and on YouTube at Queen T. Talk with Queen Teresa, sorry. And I think that's all. Till next Look, week. That's what I'm talking about. Till next week, young lady, or till Sunday. Sunday. See you Sunday. Holla at your boy. Conversation rules the nation. Action speaks louder than your action speaks louder than words. See you next time, y'all. Lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream it just the way what you're thinking about. All the thoughts bottled up and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see you. Like the world is on your shoulders and your heart is real heavy You wanna let it out but you don't know if you ready The death of a friend, falling in love The pain of life, just listen to my story You lost your best friend, shit's got you stressing Wanna find a fool who didn't cut back your weapon Don't wanna look to the church for confessions If you kill them, you can end up in corrections Some look for the needles and drugs for ejection When I lost Caesar, I was ready for the action this shit hurts hard, and it really did. But you gotta let the pain go, and that's how you live. Lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream and drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up, and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see your tears in the cloud. Feel the road that's on your shoulders, and your heart is real heavy. You wanna let
let it out, but you don't know if you ready. The death of a friend, falling in love, the pain of life. Just listen to my stories. Falling in love may be easy to some of y'all, but some people in this world have downfalls. Been in love so many times, their heart got locked jaw. Mention the word love, pause, then the tears start to crawl. Down their face fast like Niagara Falls. Feeling you had a messed up like prank calls. Why it gotta be so damn hard trying to find the right one? Set your standards high and get this like an M. Lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream and drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see your tears in the cloud. Feel like the world is on your shoulders and your heart is real heavy. You want to let it out, but you don't know if you ready. The death of a friend, falling in love. The pain of life, just listen to my story. Phone bill is due, rent and cars too. By the end of the month, and you got no food. Mom at home first, and dad can't go to work. That's only if you had a dad. Imagine that hurt. Four kids in one house, one mom and no spouse. Not enough room, and family sleep on the couch. You don't know why, and you looking for an answer. Just found out, grandpa got cancer. Lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream and drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see your tears in the cloud. Feel like the world is on your shoulders and your heart is real heavy. You want to let it out, but you don't know if you ready. The death of a friend, falling in love, the pains of life. Just listen to my stories. Just listen to my stories. Close your eyes if it's mellow. Daydream and drift away, what you thinking about? All the thoughts bottled up and you ain't trying to conceal them. Break out, fly away, see your tears in the cloud. Feel like the world is on your shoulders and your heart is real heavy. You want to let it out, but you don't know if you ready. The death of a friend, falling in love, the pain in life. Just listen to my stories.